Hey, welcome back to the Consulting Mind. Today we're going to talk about the yield curve control, and I hope it will be able to provide you with an overall understanding of how the yield curve control works. To begin with, let's talk about what exactly is yield curve control policy. Under this YCC policy, the central bank commit to buy whatever amount of bond the market is going to sell at a target price. For example, the Fed might announce and declare that they are going to buy the 10-year treasury note, the 10-year tre government bond, at 0% over the two-year horizon. And effectively, it will become the target price or the market price of the 10-year bond at the lower boundary because who will going to sell to the other to the other private investor if they can sell it at a better price to the Fed? So, uh, effectively, once the bond market believe and internalize the central bank commitment to honor this yield curve control policy, the target price will become the market price. So, how does YCC differs from QE? Are they the same thing? Um, there are key difference, a fundamental difference between two of them. In quantitative easing policy, it focuses exclusively in dealing with the quantity of the bond. For example, under the QE policy, the central bank will declare to buy a certain amount of bond uh, at a certain magnitude, say uh, 600 billion, 700 billion, or whatsoever. But they will not uh, commit or declare at what price they are going to buy the bond. Of course, we all expect that after the bond purchasing program, of course, the interest rate will go down and the yield will go down as well. But to what magnitude will the bond price go up or will the bond yield go down? We're not sure about that. And it is also not the key focus of the QE policy. But on the other hand, the yield curve control policy focus on the price of the bond. Um, just like the previous example, uh, for example, the Fed might declare they are going to buy the 10-year government bond at zero yield over a certain amount of horizon. And within this period, the Fed might cost 100 billion, 100 billion, or even more or less to honor their commitment, depending on how much transaction is going to happen within the policy framework. But here, their focus is that uh, regardless of the amount, regardless of the quantity of the bond, they are keen to lock the price of the bond at a certain range or certain amount. Bank of Japan is one of the central banks that have adopted the yield curve control policy. And there are some lessons that can be learned from the Bank of Japan experience. As you can see from the graph, which shows the balance sheet of the Bank of Japan from uh, 2010 and 2020. As you can see, since 2013, once the central bank has adopted the QQE policy, the balance sheet has expanded rapidly from 2013 about 100 trillion yen to the 400 trillion yen as at the mid of the 2016. It increased at a magnitude of about 300 trillion yen, which is a very large number. But once they have Im implemented the YCC policy in 2016, as you can see, the slope has been uh, has been flattening a lot. Over the last four years, the balance sheet has only expanded about 100 trillion at a much more lower magnitude. And yet, the 10-year bond yield can still be maintained at a historical low level. And what does that mean? It means that the Bank of Japan can be more effectively uh, control the yield at a low level with less yen, with less resources. So, uh, a credible yield curve control policy uh, effectively can be more sustainable for central bank than a quantity-based asset purchase program because it can potentially cost the central bank less amount of dollars or yen 
to achieve the policy target. Having said that, there are still some downside of the YCC policy. For one, it will be put the central bank credibility on the line. For example, when there are signs of inflation or when the inflation did come, normally the central bank would and should increase the interest rate to curb the inflation. But under the YCC policy and the promise, what should the central bank do? They are going to face a dilemma. They will either have to let the inflation go and maintain their promise to maintain the uh, low bond yield, or either they are going to break their promise to rise the interest rate to curb the inflation. And in either way, it's going to have a bad result. It will going to either jeopardize its credibility or going to ruin the economy with the inflation uh, showed up. So after he hearing this, I hope it will going to give you a more clear picture on how the YCC works and the pros and cons of this policy. And if you like this kind of video, please click the like button for me and subscribe this channel. And thank you.